Thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to speak uh, to you today. Uh, first, I will apologize myself because my English level is not so good. And uh, also, normally I am travel. This last year I traveled a lot. Well, I traveled a little bit to foreign uh, English speaking uh, countries. So I, I, uh, I'm used to use my English, but uh, this last year I didn't travel uh, as uh, I think a lot of yours. And um, I didn't speak a lot of English this last year. So my, um, my <laughs> it's a little bit difficult for me now. It's not fluent as, as, uh, as uh, the, some other times. So I will try to, um, to, be, uh, to, to, to be the more uh, uh, precise as I can. So first, I'm going to introduce myself and my university and where I'm working, uh, which department. And uh, as explained by, um, I didn't remember the name, uh, I will talk about is more about uh, uh, sharing my experience of teaching. First, so my, my and also during this COVID period, it was a little bit difficult. So I will ask you and uh, but I will, it would be very focused on my field. And my field is computer science, uh, embedded systems. So I'm sorry for the people who are really not in this uh, field. Uh, so perhaps it will be less interesting for them, but uh, I, it's my share of my experience. So, uh, so the summary of my presentation is about the evolution of my teaching method during this last year, these last 20 years. Um, and I will focus on the methods I have developed since the start of the pandemic a little bit also. Uh, and also I'm, I'm apologize because I, I didn't have a lot of time for prepare this presentation. So I don't have a lot of slides, but I'm gonna show you the platforms that I used and how I use them and also it will be uh, nice to uh, ask me some questions during the presentation through the chat, or you can take the, the, the speak and ask me some question also during my presentation. I prefer some interactive than waiting at the end for the questions, but you are, you are free to interrupt me and to ask me some question during my presentation. So I will focus on this, on the, the methods that I developed since the start of the pandemic, the COVID pandemic. And also uh, I will focus, well, share my experience in teaching in uh, several uh, uh, matters like IoT, VHDL, microcontroller, embedded system, who are my, my, uh, my fields of uh, teach. So, so uh, my principal courses. So first I will present my university. So my university is called now Sorbonne University, but before it was calling UPMC, like Université Pierre et Marie Curie. It was created by, uh, what the name of Pierre Marie Curie is in French, very famous. They, uh, they um, do a lot of research about uh, atomic energy. And, uh, but since 2018, uh, we, there was a merge of two universities. It was uh, UPMC and uh, Paris, uh, Paris II, University Paris Sorbonne. And these two universities create a big university which is called Sorbonne University. And we have in this university three faculties, one faculty of arts and humanities, one faculty of medicine, and one faculty of science and engineering. And I'm working in the faculty of science and engineering. And it's in total uh, around 50,000 students and more than uh, an, around 20,000, uh, no, uh, yeah, 20,000 employees. I don't know exactly how many teachers and extra, but it's a big university today, one of the biggest in France and uh, from the merge of these two uh, entities. Okay, yes. Uh, no, it was a little bit uh, error. Around 50,000 students. We have uh, 5,000 academic faculty staff. That, that is only for um, 
no, no, sorry, that is for the, the, the uh, total. We have a good rankings, well, some good rankings in the international ranking here in the Shanghai rankings. So we are last year 44, but that's not uh, up to date. But here you can see the ranking of our university in different uh, uh, rank, uh, <laughs> international rankings. Uh, okay. No, sorry. Yes, we have three faculties, Faculty of Art and Humanities, Faculty of Medicine, Faculty of Science and Engineering. And I'm working in the Faculty of Science and Engineering. We have uh, around 20,000 students, and there are six academic and research departments that we call UFR in French. Uh, and that's in bio biology, chemistry, engineering, so mathematics, physics, health science, environment, and biodiversity. And also, there are some institutes. There is an engineering school, Polytech Sorbonne. And there are two institutes, Paris Astrophysics Institute and Henri Poincaré Institute. And here in the engineering, there's a mechanical, uh, software, uh, computer science, uh, electronic, electric, electric engineering, robotics, a lot of different engineering. That is a, a big uh, UFR. And I'm working in the Polytech Sorbonne Engineering School. I don't know if you know the French system, but uh, in France, we have a university, but we have also engineering schools. It's a little bit special. Uh, it's, uh, they are normally outside the university, but in my case, it's an engineering school inside the university. And that is a little bit special for France. Okay, so now I make a little presentation of Polytech Sorbonne Engineering School. So we have around 1,000 students. It's a five-year studies. Well, no, it's more three-year studies. It's from uh, uh, year two, license three, sorry, to a master two. It's three years. And, uh, but we have also an integrated preparation here. It's a, uh, when we give the diploma of uh, two years ago, of all the, uh, uh, how do you say it? The, the graded students. Okay, we have which, uh, eight specialties in, my, in this engineering school, agri-food, applied mathematics and computer science, health science, electronic and computer science for embedded system, electronic and computer science for industrial application, materials, mechanical engineering, and robotics. So, and I'm, I'm uh, working in the electronics and computer science for embedded system, and I head manager of this department. So my job at Polytech Sorbonne is to, uh, so here you can, uh, See, uh, we have, it's a department with 120 students, around 120 students, it's a three-year study. Three oh. We, I'm managing an educational team of 20, uh, teach, 25 teachers, around 25, I think a little bit more. And uh, we have during these studies also three training periods in total of 36 weeks. And uh, I am, I am a, uh, what we can see in uh, in English, uh, senior lecturer, or lecturer, yes, I, I don't do research, I only give courses. Uh, in French, we call it uh, professeur agrégé. It's a little bit special. I, I didn't do research and I do a lot of course. I do uh, each year around 80, 800 hours of course in uh, this kind of field in chip design. So VHDL, so very, um, hardware description language in co-design hard soft in system on chip FPGA in this field in embedded systems in embedded C microcontrollers real-time operating system also since a couple uh, yes it's five years I developed some uh, uh, courses in, in the internet of things so with the LP1 technologies 
Bluetooth energy, Bluetooth technology, Wi-Fi, low power design, and also since uh, two years now, uh, artificial intelligence. I I do a little course about artificial intelligence and more focus on embedded systems. And also I do a lot of projects uh, and I follow a lot of projects in embedded system, in connected object, and also some industrial projects uh, that we do with some uh, industries. They give projects that our students are developing during their studies. Okay. So outside uh, Polytech, Sorbonne, I do a lot of also courses in uh, an international field. I do uh, some since uh, three or four years, I go to China at uh, Xi'an University in Xi'an. It's, uh, it's not so, uh, not so uh, it's a city not so well known as Beijing, Pekin, uh, Beijing or, or Canton, Guangzhou. But it's a lit, it's a big, it's one of the oldest city of uh, China, and there I have a program. Uh, we have a program. We receive some students of the, this, this university, and we go there to give in course. And I give course about microprocessor systems, about ARM seven, uh, ARM seven. Uh, I do also some course about digital electronics, VHDL. Uh, I did also some real-time operating system for an international week. And I do some course in IoT and uh, artificial intelligence for graduate students also one year. Also, since 2009, I'm also technical consultant in the industry. I do some uh, course for Thales about embedded calculators for aircraft and also working a little bit in some startups like, uh, but they are not no, well known for you. I think Smart Impulse, WiseBite, Didalab. I do since uh, 2009, I, I also work a little bit in, uh, as a consultant in, uh, and in the industry. Uh, I also give since uh, five years, some courses in private engineering schools in Paris. So I don't, there are, from your side, perhaps not well known, but there are, EPITA is a, is a big engineering school, NCEA and ISEP. I give some courses there about uh, since a couple, uh, five, five years. So that was my presentation. And uh, I see that you're not all working in, uh, in the field of uh, computer science of, uh, or, uh, or uh, electronic electronic engineering, but uh, I can see that a lot of you working in this field because the next uh, slide will be focused on my teaching experience, and I will uh, show you uh, one some of my courses and the materials I use for these courses. First, I will be make a focus on the evolution of my teaching experience. I begin uh, teach in two thousand three exactly but i i also teach a little bit during my studies and uh, in this time the organization of a 30 uh, a standard 30 hour course it was a lot of lecture that we call uh, in french cours magistraux as uh, uh, some tutorials that we call in french travaux dirigés that is more exercises and some labs so uh, that we call in french travaux pratiques and I was, uh, during this period, I was a little bit disappointed because uh, most of the time during the lectures, the students didn't uh, 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 remember that what I'm talking about. And I have a lot of time to repeat all the things during the labs and during the tutorials. So the conclusion of this organization of my courses was not so good results. The knowledge of the students at the end of the course was poor. I was thinking the most of the time I was in lecture, I was speaking, speaking, but the students did not remember a lot of, of what I was talking. And I, I, uh, I, uh, I saw that the most of the knowledge was acquired during the labs. So I changed. So here is, is very short explanation, but I changed a lot of my courses during uh, my my 
this, the next 10 years. So, so I, I change a lot of my course organization and I do a less lecture. So only si between six or eight hours of lecture. And most of the time it was short periods of lecture of half an hour or one hour, not more. And I do a lot of labs of tutorials and I try to do a project in each of my courses. So I do more and more project because I was seeing that uh, that the, the knowledge war and the and the skills also the skills because it's on not only knowledge and uh, today we're speaking a lot of, about skills acquisition acquisition was acquired during the project and uh, when you have to think by yourself about solutions because. When you are lect when you are doing uh, following a lecture, following a course, is the students are very passive and they remember only a ten or five percent what you are saying. And when you are doing a lab, they following a, a, a tutorial. Or we can call it. A, I don't know if you call it tutorials or labs. They are uh, following a, a subject, so it's more. They are more active. But they they don't ask them a lot of questions about to found how to find a solution how to uh, to develop uh, uh, knowledge and how to acquire real skills and during a project so they are more active they are really uh, uh, thinking about solutions they are ma making mistakes they are so I I I, I do a lot of project based learning we can call it like this and a lot of my colleagues also in other fields in mathematics physics are developed what we can call a, pro, a problem based learning we make a lot of uh, we make some uh, uh, um, of uh, we learn some some uh, methods of these methods with uh, uh, some sorry we learn we learn some methods of this kind of uh, of, of learning with uh, university of louvain i don't know if you heard about this university in uh, in uh, belgium it's a uh, uh, university we are doing only project based learning and problem based learning because there were things like me that course was not so efficient so a lot of my colleagues and me too we changed our methods to do a more and more project during our our courses so that is a little bit focus on on the evolution of my course organization during my 20 years experience i do more and more projects so teaching with the COVID-19 pandemic. So I, I make only one slide. I'm sorry I didn't because I don't really know how to express it. But uh, we make a massive use of Moodle. I don't know if you know Moodle. Yes. Yes. Perhaps. All universities here in Baristan use Moodle. OK. Uh, it's, it's a very so we use it before the pandemic. But now, uh, since the pandemic, we use it uh, a lot to share the course materials, to share the lecture videos. So I make a lot of videos of my courses. So because um, I do in live streaming because the, 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 the students prefer to do have live uh, teaching, but I make also some videos of my lectures so they can go to see back to, 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 to see uh, some part of the course. I use uh, tools uh because the, when we are doing some uh i i uh, my by my experience when uh, we are uh, doing some uh, some uh, some online courses we need the students need to be interactive because listening all the time to someone speak, speaking in a screen is not so interesting so they ask a lot of interactive and i use uh tools you it's called WooClap. I don't know if you know it or if you use it, but it's a very good uh, tools. I can show you perhaps uh, shortly. I'm going to show you rapidly this tool. So here is a Moodle. 
am I gonna sorry uh, tech oh sorry I show you here for example I think I, I use it here so who clap is a tool it's introduced in uh, it you can uh, use it oh sorry um, So you can, so it look like this. So you have a link here. The, the students gone on this link and they can, uh, you can ask some questions like here, it's a question and they can uh, respond to the question. And then also we can see who did the, the good answer. We did uh, here, we can see that 30 students uh, gives a good answer and free student they didn't give the good answer and you can see you can see it interactive so you can ask a lot of questions you can make some easy questions and then the, the student can answer and they can see and you can see also if they if they uh, retain the most uh, important uh, topics of the course and also the students like to to have some more interactive part of the course in place to listening during one hour, someone speaking. So I know that uh, with the chat, you can also have some interaction, but most of the time the students don't ask a lot of questions. I don't know what is your experience, but uh, in my experience, they did sometimes one or two students are asking some question, but to do some uh, interactive questions. So to, uh, when you have a course and you stop and you give some questions, like uh, I do it for, I try to do it for more and more of my courses. And uh, here is the interface. So you can easily create a question here, uh, give some uh, response then, and then launch this, this, this uh, uh, do this, this, uh, ask this question on live so i don't know if you are using this kind of tool but i uh, have, a, have a good experience with this tool in uh, that in moodle is it like mentimeter perhaps there are other tools the, the i think there's a lot of tools but i don't i'm not a specialist of the all the tools but uh, perhaps there is another with this name uh, tech so I use WooClap to make some inter interactive question. Also, I used another tool is called Code Runner. Uh, Code Runner. So that was very uh, uh, that uh, auto code check. So it's a tool you can use it in a software language for C language, Java, Python. But also I make. Uh, um, uh, accommodation to use it also with um, with VHDL because VHDL uh, hardware description language. So the, the students can deposit their code and the platform will execute it and uh, see if the code is correct and then say to the students the code is correct or is not correct and here are the errors. So that is useful first for the people who don't have a lot of uh, software tools but that's not but also to see uh, to verify for me that the the the, the students are doing the exercise and uh, and that they uh, they uh, they do it uh, correctly also for the evaluation i use a lot the test module of uh, moodle so uh, most of my tests now I do it, uh, I think perhaps you also, huh? uh, most of my evaluation, I do it on Moodle today. So, and uh, I have, uh, sorry, here, for example, uh, no, I think that you're also using this kind of, if you have Moodle, uh, this kind of tools but uh, it's very useful. So you can ask some questions. So what I do to, so to have uh, not, uh, 
because the problem with uh, online evaluation is uh, that the student gonna uh, I don't uh, copy or but the solution is to ask a lot of questions in a short time that I found and also to uh, to share or to um, to not give the same question to each student so it it takes some time to prepare the evaluation but at the end uh, the evaluation you can make more evaluations so and also the correction time is very short that is the the the, the good uh, the good side of this work of this kind of tools but it takes a lot of time to prepare an evaluation but one time you prepare you have it so the correction time is is shorter so i do a lot of evaluation during this pandemic with this kind of uh, most of my evaluation so and uh, perhaps i you know so also you can create easily some question give some answers give some point to each answer so uh, here you can ask some uh, uh, mcq questions so with uh, right or false but like here here's more right or false question that so that is uh, easy to make but also you can create some questions when you have to give a short response like here uh, Okay, so I, I put some uh, different uh, response that you can give and see if they have made the, the good uh, response. Uh, you can, has the response can be also a number, like here. Uh, it's not so uh, as good as a, a normal evaluation, but during the pandemic, it was a, a good solution I found to make some evaluation online. And also, I use that it was also very uh, useful the deposit. Uh, so here I have a microcontroller course for each lab. For each lab, I create a deposit where they can give back the code and the and the, the explanation about them work, uh, the report of the of the work. So here you can see that is my, one of my Moodle course organization. So I give here the, the pedagogical seconds. And then I put for each chapter the, the course materials and also the video of this course. I uh, give for some, here is a, it's a tutorials, some exercises. So I will explain it later. So and what we are doing during the pandemic is to follow them on uh, for the, sorry for the courses. So I use uh, massively Zoom and I think like you. And also we use a lot of Discord because the I don't know if you know Discord is a free tool. What it's you can use it freely, and it's a. Uh, uh, very common because the students use this tool a lot uh, together. So they are very, uh, um, very, uh, they use this tool very easily. And uh, for following the labs and the project and the tutorials, we use more Discord. Discord. And for the lecture, I use Zoom because uh, the quality of the of the bandwidth, etc. Zoom was better than Discord. So perhaps I show you also Discord. I don't know if you, uh, I know it's not open. Oh, sorry. Okay, Discord is at the, I think at the beginning it was more um, um, a gamer platform for gaming, but uh, we use it a lot in education. So it's a platform, so you can, they create some servers here and we have for each year and for each um, module, a channel, for example, for my uh, microcontroller uh, course, we have a channel here 
and so we can chat interactively but we can also have some video channels like here uh, you can share your screen they can share their screen also uh, so we use a lot of of discord uh, last year for the for the labs and for the for the projects and also for the tutorials some of my colleagues using also uh, tools is called big blue button I don't know if you heard about it. Somehow, huh? in a, some of universities, yes, some is not. But each one has a model can use. Uh, yeah. yeah. Can use that this. is some I didn't use it. So uh, because uh, I didn't take the time to. Uh, but it seems to be a good tool also what yeah, at the beginning, I didn't use it because there was some bandwidth or some uh, problems to connect together. Some students were disconnected. Uh, so we uh, they use big blue button and also um, uh, another tool, but I don't use it also. Uh, this look like Zoom like zoom uh, it, it, they record uh, and also they can record the uh, lectures i uh, i evaluate university who use this uh, big blue button yeah it, it is I, I, it is very close to the to zoom and uh, to go meetings yeah but you can what's the, the difference that you can make some uh, some uh, uh, rooms and you can have some uh, blackboard and you can, uh, but I think in Zoom, you can do it also today, huh? but I don't use it, yes. uh, these this, uh, this, uh, tools of Zoom, but you can make groups in book, big blue button, you can make, meet several groups and then they, um, they can uh, work to get together. Yeah, it's integrated in Moodle, so and Panopto to make some video. I use it also, but uh, just one time. For the video, I'm more using uh, YouTube <laughs> because it's. Uh, I found it easier to make some video to put it on YouTube, and uh, and uh, and share with the students. So that is most of the tools I used. Now I will explain a little bit more uh, focus on five courses I did uh, during the pandemic. So. Also about the organization of this course. So what I was doing, so I do a lot of computer science courses and a lot of uh, engineering, elect electric engineering and uh, embedded systems. So here for this uh, VHDL course, hardware description language is uh, 60 hours. I have 11 short lectures of 30 to 45 minutes followed by 11 exercises and these exercises are using a simulator. So it's here is the software tools that I use was model sim or GHDL with GTK waves that are open source and model sim is a free tool. So they are, during this course, they, uh, they have to download this software to install on their on their computer. And then uh, they can do the exercise at, uh, at them uh, are their, are their side. And uh, so I, I show you rapidly model sim, but it's more for that tool like this. And you can do some simulation of some uh, logic design, digital logic design, and you can see some results. And these tools is very uh, well known in the industry. You can have it, you can have some uh, version, free version, if you take the model sim Altera tools. So if you want to have more precision, precision about this kind of tool so and for uh, for this course i use a lot of uh, of simulation normally and also uh, we use a board is a, a de10 uh, so yeah i will uh, uh, give some answer to the question stm 32 microcontroller yes uh, to answer to Khaled, I, I will show you later. Uh, for, but for this course, I was doing a lot of, of simulation during the exercises. 
And I have two labs about uh, BCD counter and VGA interface. This one was possible only on boards. So it was difficult to do it. Uh, normally, I do it in a, uh, in a, it was difficult to, de to do uh, in, a, I don't know how to say it, uh, online courses, what uh, in French we say presentiel, distanciel. Um, how do you say it uh, in English? I'm sorry, I don't find the words. Synchronized and asynchronized? No more presence and no presence. Distance, so distant teaching and presence in the, in the lab. Uh, I, I was more talking about this because th these two labs they need some materials. But what what I did with some of uh, some uh, students, I give a board to each student so he can use it at home. I'm using this kind of board. Is a, I present it also a little bit. Is a very good board. You can do a lot of things with this board, and also uh, it's it's not so expensive. It cost. Uh, 60 dollars and sometimes you have academic uh, more uh, you have an academic price and this is a board fpga board where you can do a lot of uh, labs and they can do it at home so for some of my courses i give the board to each one board to each student so he can do the lab at home uh, that is more focused on digital electronics uh, so you have a lot of uh, switches, LEDs, uh, uh, seven segment display, and you can do some exercises, uh, some labs with this kind of board. You can also connect some uh, outside uh, boards. So that is a very uh, useful uh, uh, materials to do, uh, to do my courses. And you have also some uh, examples, some, um, there are also some labs given by uh, Terazic, etc. Sorry. So, and I use model sim for simulation and I use Quartus 2. It's an Intel Antera tool to do uh, this kind of course. Also for this course, I do uh, two kind uh, of, um, of projects. As I say before, I do a lot of projects at the end of my courses. And I have two kinds of projects. I have one project is the goal is to describe the architecture of a 32-bit processor based on the instruction set of the famous ARM7 TDMI core. I, I, I can do it with only simulation. That, so that is useful for distance course, online courses. We, when you cannot go to the use the materials, or we can also uh, try to um, we can also synthesize and test it on this board. I have also another project is describing an uh, UART core and communicating with a PC for a serial link. So that is, uh, but for this one, normally we need a board and a PC to communicate. Uh, okay. Then another course. Uh, here I focus a little bit on my course. Uh, sorry for the people who are not in this field. Okay. Uh, so the co-design Artsoft is uh, the objective of this course is design a complete system around a soft core. A soft core is a is a processor described in v VHDL. In hardware description language, uh, we have uh, in this course three short lectures of one hour plus three lab. It's three kind of tutorials who explain how to use the tools. The first course plus the lab is create an entire uh, an entire system on chip around the NIOST two soft core. So the, that is a famous soft core given for free by Altera Intel Altera. Then I have a second course plus the lab is adding a custom peripheral to this system on chip. And then I have a first third course and lab is working with Linux on the Cortex M9 A9 to doing some uh, simple driver with the MMAP method. And then I have a little project 
who consists to add some uh, custom other custom peripherals and to do uh, a 2D ra radar with uh, ultrasonic telemeter and uh, servo motor. I hope that you can understand my 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 English accent. Uh, so for this course, I use the same a little bit the same tools at uh, the VHDL course. Is the is the tools from uh, Quartus. They are free. Well, you can have uh, there are one part of these tools are uh, free, the light edition, because when you are using this tool, you have the standard and the pro there, you have need the license and the light one is free. So the student can install on their own, own uh, laptop. And so you can do also some distance course. Okay. Mm. Rufian, can I ask you to uh, to copy best and in chat these two links? Sorry, could be and best in chat chat. Okay, okay, but I can at the end I can give you the, my uh, my presentation also. But up, sorry, uh, I will copy and so here are the tools I use, and here is a famous board. So this board, I will make some explanation because it's very useful. It's used in a lot of uh, university of uh, American university. It's also uh, a board with you can do a lot of uh, labs projects. So it's a very complete board because you can do some computer science, you can do some Linux embedded Linux, you can do um, uh, electronic uh, digital electronics uh, projects or labs. So, and it's not so expensive, it's $220. Well, perhaps it's, I don't know what are your, uh, your budget, but, uh, and you can do, and it's given with a lot of resources, with some uh, demos, and there are also a, a good user manual. And also you can find a lot of labs uh, given in the American university on this, or some projects. It's a real, it's a used when you, if you're searching on the internet, you can find some uh, teaching materials about this board. Uh, okay. Then I do uh, some Internet of Things courses that since uh, uh, since uh, five years quietly um, and uh, I do some teach about Wi-Fi, about Bluetooth, about LP1 technologies. So LP1 is uh, LoRa and Sigfox. I don't know, it's quite new technologies, but very uh, use, uh, used in uh, the industry. I do some lab with Sigfox modules. I do also some MQTT REST and co-op protocols. I explain these different protocols for the IoT. And I have two little projects. One project is send that, sending data from a device to a cloud, cloud with REST and MQTT. And I have a second project is low power device sending data with Sigfox. So we create a, a low, uh, sorry, there's an error here. Uh, sorry. Device. Sending data with Sigfox. Okay. And here, the software tools I, I'm using Arduino most of the time, UbiDots and IBM Cloud Lite. All these are UbiDots, Arduino, IBM Cloud Lite are free. You can use it freely. And uh, so, it will be nice to explain a little bit more, but uh, I see the time is going fast. Huh? And the hardware, I'm using ESP32 hardware. Uh, it's a very also uh, useful uh, board because it costs only five or 10 euros and you can do a lot of labs uh, in the IoT field. So, uh, sorry. You can search on internet ESP32 is a board 
that uh, with uh, I'm gonna look on Wikipedia is a board. Uh, no, not this one, but well, it didn't matter. Well, it's a board made by a co company called Espressive, and uh, there's a architecture. There's a Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, and it costs uh, a module USB 32 module is cost like uh, you can find for free five euros if you buy it in China. But uh, I think you can you can buy it for very cheap. It's very cheap, cheap board and very useful to do a lot of labs in the IoT field. So I, I put it here, OSP32, or another board is called OSP3266. It was the previous version with only Wi-Fi. And there's a lot of of uh, of uh, of help and uh, so and also I have I I wanted uh, I was uh, um, supposed to present you also uh, do-it-yourself hardware because for example uh, you can find a lot of examples on the site I don't know if you know it is a I use it a lot with my students, Hackster. Hackster.io is a maker site where you have a lot of projects made by people with do-it-yourself hardware. And you can find some very good projects uh, where the people explain, explain all the projects the electronics, the code, etc. So there can be some ideas for lab, for project, for yourself project, and also to learn some some new things. Okay, I I share also with you and also this last year. Hmm, sorry. This last year, I asked my students. Yeah, not MCU virtues, it's a little. Okay. Uh, so there are some questions. I will ask a response to this question uh, perhaps now, but what is the difference between this device with Raspberry Pi and no, not MCU V2? Is the, this one only on one also interesting? So I, well, I'm going to show you. I have the little presentation and I, I want to present you. Sorry, it's not here. It's here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it shortly. I'm gonna send you also this presentation. Uh, do it yourself hardware. So I use it more and more in my courses because it's very cheap. And also it's very nice for the student to use it. So you, I think you all know the Arduino platform is born in 2005. It combines some software, hardware. It's great for prototyping. It was made by origin for, by, for artists. It's from Italian origin. So you have a lot of uh, different hardware, uh, Arduino hardware boards also, and also software is open source, open hardware, open software. You have a standard form factor is really easy to program. Also, that is uh, very nice. Uh, there are a lot of uh, different board, but I going to bit. There's also some shields that you can add and you can make a prototype rapidly a prototype. There's a software programming that uh, is free also. You have many libra libraries. Uh, it's based on Java, but it's, it's, uh, you write in a kind of C, C++, uh, etc. So that is Arduino. Then you have Raspberry Pi. So the thing is that an Arduino board is cost between 10, 20 euros. A Raspberry Pi is a little bit more expensive is more about 35 euros and here it's a big system you have a linux you have a, a arm based uh, you have some hdmi you have some usb gpio ojo etc so you can do a lot of fun project with a raspberry pi as i think you can you use it already in your courses i use it also you can program in python in java in c c++ you have a lot of libraries for hardware I gone a little bit fast because uh, the time is running. Uh, 
you have some uh, several interfaces to do SPI, UART, I square C, etc. But the problem you have no ADC, and you have since Raspberry Pi three wife and BLE. So and so that's that's Raspberry Pi Arduino. They are famous, but here as USP eighty two sixty six chip is a very uh, simple chip. It's more microcontroller focused. So, okay, and it consumes uh, less power and it's more easy to use to to begin a program. So and it's cost. This board costs only two euros, and uh, you can buy it for very cheap. So this one is very simple. But you have the node MCU. This call is uh, is, uh, is uh, the cost is uh, around eight dollar euros. It's uh, quite the same. And here you have a board with several input output. You can program it with C C++ uh, with Arduino. You have a Wi-Fi and one ADC. And then in, since 2016, you have a USP32 with the Nod MCU version 2, which uh, talking your colleagues before. And that is a very uh, board, very uh, common to do some IoT uh, projects or labs. I using a lot in my course, also in the RTOS course. So that was a little a brief about this kind of board because it's very cheap. You can give a board to each student easily and they can do a lot of projects easily with this kind of boards so that was a little bit uh, focus on this on this uh, side so th the difference with the raspberry pi is that it's cheaper it consumes lesser energy and it's more easy to program you, you don't have a linux system you can use a arduino ide and uh, that is uh, the difference with the raspberry pi Okay, for my MCU course, what I'm doing also is that I share, I share a, a, a box, a NUM box with my students. Okay, and uh, in this box, we can find a MCU board. I'm using for the moment, I use the Arc Pro LPC70. It's a little bit uh, looking like uh, STM32. That was another question, but it's not quite the same. But uh, it's a, it's an NXP uh, board, and I share uh, RG, uh, LCD screen, temperature and sense sensor, push button, uh, ultrasound telemeter, potentiometer, sound buzzer, loudspeaker. I give a board to each student so we he can do the lab at home. And that I was I'm using this kind of uh, of uh, tools to uh, to do the, the the course during the the COVID period. And the tools I'm using is these two tools. I don't know if you know it. Sorry. Oh. I I share the links as asked. So Kale is more uh, conventional IDE, and Embed is very. Uh, what is very common is that it's an online compiler. So you don't have to install nothing on your nothing to install on your computer. You can use it online, and that is very easy to use for the students. So they don't have to install anything. Oh, sorry, it isn't doesn't work now. Uh, now I need to uh, use another one. So, but perhaps I need to use Safari. Okay, here you can see the embed compiler. So you, it's a uh, so also it's a very easy uh, manner to program microcontrollers. You have here at the left side, oh, sorry, the different projects. You can edit the code online. Okay. And then you can compile here. And you can very easily program a chip, a board. You just, when you put 
plug a board, you see it like a USB stick and you can put your code on the board. So I use a lot of uh, these, uh, these uh, libraries and this, uh, because so the, the student don't have to install anything. They don't, they just need a browser. It's free also. And also it's a high, uh, high level of programming. Okay, I'm a little bit out of time, sorry. So my pedagogical seconds for the MCU course is an introduction. I make uh, some uh, course about GPIO and Pincel, some exercise on simulator, then external interview, then exercise on board, serial interfaces, I square C, SPI, serial, and then I do a lab on board uh which is to write on the lcd rgb i do then i talk about the timer i do an exercise on on a simulator and then i have a lab about an ultrasonic range fender finder then i talk about the analog interface and i have a lab about an audiometer and then i do a, a course about embed os rtos so the the platform and also the real-time operating system of this platform. And I do a lab about motor control. And then I have a project is uh, to uh, embed an FFT on the microcontroller. So that is uh, that's very interesting because they have to, uh, to see some uh, algorithm to that fit on a microcontroller and can be uh, running in real time. And also I do a line finder robot and I do a challenge, so they, the student likes also this kind of, uh, of projects. So I finished, I'm sorry, a little bit late, but I want to show you a last video because I do a lot of projects also. And one of my most uh, important projects is to develop a complete embedded systems with sensor, with embedded signal processing with an MCU, do some wireless communication, efficient, power efficient and autonomous with a battery and solar panel. And also with a cloud dashboard to see the result, uh, with the, see the result of the, of the monitoring. Uh, the objective of this project is to uh, do a beehive monitoring and in this project, we involve also some beekeepers. And uh, it's a project of participative research is that uh, we, uh, in the project, we have some students, beekeep beekeepers and teachers. And I will finish to show you a video. You can have it on this link, but uh, I'm gonna show you the original version. Uh, sorry. But I'm going to show you the online. one of my project I, I so it's in French so I'm gonna try to translate it so we were working with students on a real beehives donc, bonjour, donc, je me présente, je m'appelle Yann Douze je suis professeur so, à Polytech Sorbonne yeah, introduce et myself. Électronique informatique pour les that marqués. is our project Dans room des projets avec nos étudiants cette année, on a mis en place un projet qui s'appelle Open Rush. So the name of the project was Open, Open Beehive. Et de répondre à tous les, tous les problèmes qu'il peut y avoir autour des abeilles aujourd'hui. And it was focused on the, the bee problems. About. Oui, effectivement. Donc, moi, je fais Here, de there's a beekeeper who was explaining the different problems that he has in, in, his, uh, in his work. For example, uh, I don't know if you have this problem in Palestine, but uh, there's Varwa. I don't know the English name. 
la récolte. C'est parasite euh, here. Of these. Et ensuite, le frelon asiatique. Then you have the Asiatic frelon. I don't know the, the English name, but that is also very uh, a big problem in France today with the for the beekeepers. And also, there are some people who are stalling some beehives because the beehives are costing between 300 and 350 euros. So we're finding some solution to uh, to, re to, uh, to monitor monitor the, the beehive. So they put a, some sensors on the beehive and uh, to, to acquire the temperature inside the beehive, the, the weight of the beehive, and also to be autonomous in energy, also to acquire the temperature and the humidity. We also monitor the sound of the bees. Donc tout, tout ça, on va commencer à le faire sur une carte. Euh, We une first carte, make a prototype ou, euh, like this to test en fait, all the sensors and all the, the communication modules. Et une fois qu'ils ont validé tout ça, ils vont code. créer une carte électronique. And then they ha need to they have to make a PCB, a printed circuit board. We have the tools to create them at school. And then they have also to do the, the packaging. So they package all the battery, all the, the, the electronic boards, and all the sensors are on the beehive. And then all the, all the, the data, the sensor data are connected et on envoie un monitor on some platform pendant euh, quelques secondes pour remonter les données des capteurs. C'est quelque chose qui euh, the... dérange beaucoup moins les abeilles. Derrière, en fait, il y a un travail aussi qui est fait sur l'analyse de ces, toutes ces données et remonter des alertes pertinentes. Et donc là, il y a eu des tests qui ont été faits. And we made some tests on the on the real real beehives. We do uh, some uh, on the ruches, field. Sur les vraies ruches avec des vraies abeilles. Pour tester, en fait, la we test the, the robustness, the fiability of the project. Ce capteur, and that was very nice for the students to uh, to use the project in a real uh, in a real uh, application with real uh, people, real real. Uh, and here also we can see that some sensor doesn't fit. Les so it's a participatory research project là, with uh, beekeepers, students, teachers, researchers. Donc là, euh, le projet il arrive à sa fin pour ce groupe d'étudiants pour cette année. Donc là, les étudiants vont transmettre les rochers aux apiculteurs et on va mettre en test pendant bah, le printemps, l'été. Et en fait, on va refaire des projets comme ça. Donc là, on va recommencer un projet avec un autre groupe d'étudiants. Parce qu'en fait, à travers ce projet, ils apprennent l'électronique, ils apprennent à créer un système embarqué complet. Ils vont mettre tous leurs résultats sur un GitHub also, de l'école. En fait, Et en fait, l'idée, c'est d'enrichir les connaissances qui pourront être analysées aussi par d'autres spécialités d'école. Et puis, à la fin, ça devient un projet en fait, de recherche participative des chercheurs, des étudiants, des apiculteurs. Pour l'utiliser dans So I'm finished now. I'm sorry, it was a little bit longer than expected. I find up. Thank you, thank you, thank you Professor Jan, for uh, your um, uh, full fruitful um, presentation, and also your uh, your way uh, make us uh, more active and um, uh, more involvement in your uh, presentations and. Uh, uh, also raise our expectations uh, and uh, and expand our knowledge about um, uh, different platforms and different uh, tools of uh, uh, 
distance learning and uh, e-learning. Uh, but now I call uh, uh, Hamid. Hamid, if you please, there is uh, there are two or three persons raise their hands and also uh, questions in uh, in chat. Please, Hamid. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Jan. Uh, first of all, I would I would like to say that your English is really perfect, fluent, and I didn't have any problem to understand that. Even a really nice, also, uh, yeah, accent so combination with the French and English. Really, really, I enjoyed your presentation. Thank you so much for for giving your really live practical experiences uh, out of your classes. So let's see, uh, let's start with the questions uh, uh, from Khaled Tamizi. Please come and uh, yeah, the macro is for you, Khaled. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, nice presentation, Mr. Yan, and the effort that you really do it to uh, connect your student. Uh, first of all, I was gonna do it from Paris Saclay, so we are neighbors. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask if you use microchip microcontrollers because I already uh, taught to, to my student at my university and I tried to use the software Proteus for simulation and MPLAB. MPLAB, yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't use uh, microchip microcontrollers. My, I have some colleagues that are using it, but for my course, I don't use microchip microcontrollers. I, I'm using, as I say, um, LPC 70X from NXP. Yeah. Uh, and that was, uh, and also I use some STM32 uh, boards more in project because uh, I didn't show it. I didn't have to show it, but uh, the the sorry it's not here the embed platform this platform uh one of the it can the be used for stm huh the embed it can be used with stm to program yes it. yes but not not with microchip i think okay. because microchip what uh the thing is that uh, embed you can use it only with arm arm based because it's an easy initiative of arm you can only use it with arm uh, based microcontrollers but there are a lot of chips and i know that uh, microchip uh, by um, atmel atmel uh, since uh, two years i think and there are some atmel boards that can be used but not microchip but uh, it was a cho choice for me to don't use microchip because I think that microchip was very famous uh, 10 years ago with the peak and uh, etc. But today, the most used uh, microcontrollers in the industry is more ARM based, Cortex M, -M based microcontrollers. Yeah, for, so, for that reason, I'm trying to move up uh, to STM32 board yeah. system and I start to learn about it. So if you have some materials or something, I will appreciate it to share it with me because I'm managing to the next semester to start almost with STM32 rather than using a microchip microcontroller because now okay. it's the... I, have don't, I don't have a course specific on STM32, but I use it with, with embed and with embed is very easy because what my course of microcontrollers is a mix of... Uh, of register programming, low level programming to understand how to program a peripherals, how to program a, and to understand how it works inside. But also I'm using more and more the high level programming with embed because with, when you use embed, as you can see here, uh, sorry. Yeah, I use it before embed. Oh, you, you use embed. it also. You can, yeah. you can program very easily. You don't need a lot of, uh, but I don't really have uh, materials specific on STM32. But I can share my materials about uh, LPC7068. Uh, it's a Cortex M based processor, but it's in French. Okay, I'll try to manage with it. Thank you very yeah, you much. Can, you can send me a my email. message and I can share with you, no problem. Uh, I, I can give you here my email also if you want to, uh, to exchange more. Uh, and so, 
tac, I put it in the chat. Yeah, I will send you a message yeah. through email to. No problem. Thank you very much. But uh, I'm using uh, with uh, with embed. I'm using a board. This board. Uh, it's very uh, common because it's very cheap. This one. Nucleo. Uh, it's cost uh, ten euros. And what's very uh, good is that you have a, a, a microcontroller and a debugger on the board. What's uh, the board? Yeah, it's on it's the board. Yeah, uh, and a stealing verse two on the same board for ten euros. So it's very cheap, and we use a lot of. We use most of the time. We use this board in the project. Also in the project, I show you about the beehive monitoring. We use this board. So I'm going to send you also the link because it's a very useful board. It's very complete and uh, it's very cheap. And very cheap. It's, it's 10 euros. So it's uh, I, I, when I see uh, several years ago, I, when I was buying some uh, boards for labs, it was cost uh, around 200, 300 euros. The debugger also 300 euros. Now today, you can find some uh, evaluation boards. It's much simpler, but uh, for 10 euros. So it's uh, it's a very big, big change this last uh, 10 years. So thank you so much uh, for this case. So now Mira Salaima, uh, if I'm right. Yeah, please come and yeah, please ask your question. Uh, is my, my voice uh, here? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you, Hamad, uh, Mr. Hamad, and thank you, Jan, for sharing your methods that you have developed since the start of the pandemic. And I want to talk about uh, the Palestine Polytechnic University experience in preparing exams for Moodle at the COVID-19 period. Um, many teachers here prepare quizzes through Google Classroom directly, and others prepare uh, their quizzes through preparing uh, questions, categories, and banks through Moodle. And then the teacher set up model to choose a random questions from question bank, where every student will have a different form of questions. Hmm. But unfortunately, and despite that, we still suffer sometimes, sometimes from students cheating in electronic exams. So do you have any suggestions uh, to solve this problem in this subject? And thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. If I understand the question, is that they cheating? That means that they copy together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's also a little bit difficult, but but the the only solution that I find is to make to to give a lot of questions in a short period, so they don't have a lot of time to uh, yes. to communicate. Yes, I do that. Yeah. The we, same do way that. That. we do that also. We do that. Yeah. And the other thing still, is, is still we suffer. Yeah. And the other thing is that uh, is uh, for example to um, to uh, bad, to uh, to um, in Moodle in the test Moodle uh, I don't use uh, Google Classroom so I don't know this tool but in uh, the Moodle test uh, tool you can choose between. Uh, sequential or uh, uh, I mean they I, 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 I choose um, a methodology that they can now go back in the questions because uh, when you give Forward. sequential navigation yeah Forward. so they cannot come back yes yeah that that is also a good solution to to uh, to avoid uh, what to uh, limit the the copy uh, between each student because when you can come back because the, the question are not in the same order normally they cannot uh, synchronize on the different uh, questions okay thank you uh, i mean that you you don't use any additional uh, instrument or any additional uh, program for uh, for solving this issue no for my point, but I I I, I notice when to, with my exams when I see because I know a little bit my students, I have some uh, grades that correspond to the level of the students because I I can see in the labs and also in the question I and there are some questions some students that I know since the year before, 
and I don't have a lot of copy uh, problems. Yeah. But because so I don't, I don't search some other strategy. But uh, it's it's sure I I know that some other people use some um, ask to the students to uh, put on the camera and uh, on Zoom and so they can see all students that are not speaking with other. But it's a li little bit I think a little bit intrusive. So I don't use this kind of uh, of systems. But I know there are there are some colleagues at the university. They are using this kind of methods to uh, to ask to each student to uh, open his camera and to see that he's not uh, trying. We do, to... we do here uh, sometimes. Sometimes of some some of teachers they do this. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't use it for the moment, but I I think my grades are a little bit kind uh, the same as the other years. So for me it was correct. I don't have a, a lot of. Uh, I have uh, some poor, some uh, students with. Uh, well, I was. Uh, it was. It was sure better. Uh, what the other thing? What I found better with the the online test evaluation that you can create more evaluation. And I try sometimes also to do after each course to do a little evaluation, yeah. so to be sure that they follow the course. So they give a lot of little grades. But sometimes they are good, but the goal is that they learn, that they understand the topic. So it 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 asks a little bit more work because we have to prepare the questions, and that can be a lot of sometimes a lot of work. But after that, you can be sure that the that they follow the course and that they understand the the the, the main goals, the main topics of the course. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, May I add something please, for uh, for Mira? If uh, yeah. if you if Hamid, um, uh, yani, uh, I use uh, I don't have uh, uh, copy and paste from my students because uh, I make that what uh, look like what uh, Jan said that uh, uh, there is no time for them to uh, to to speak with others with each others. Uh, because the exam is uh, in the same in the fixed time, it is fit with the time. And also, uh, sometimes I ask, ask them to present their understanding by their languages in order to uh, in, to uh, read what they understand. Uh, it is also unique unique answer. Not um, uh, it is not a common answer between students. This yeah. is also the, the second uh, the second way. Sometimes I ask them util to utilize this uh, the, the the their answer or thinking their thoughts in a real situation related to their uh, interest and their, then uh, the different types of questions and uh, but uh, also in the in the in the time. Uh, till now, I don't have any uh, could be best could be best uh, question, uh, answers from uh, my students. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. And now uh, we Jalal. have a question from Engineer Jalal. Yeah, please. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, I want to thank uh, you for your presentation. And uh, uh, you, at the beginning of your presentation, uh, through your experience, you said that uh, you are not uh, uh, satisfied about the, the, the output of the students uh, when you are uh, focusing on lectures and knowledge and not on labs. Uh, okay, what I want to ask is, uh, uh, you, what you, you are talking about how to develop a new methods for uh, students to acquit the, uh, the lab or the workshop. Uh, what you present is about electrical and maybe computer engineering. I want to know uh, how, you, how your colleague in mechanical engineering and in other uh, fields of engineering uh, can uh, uh, benefit from these methods or do you have any methods, any tools uh, regarding uh, practical uh, mechanical engineering and civil engineering? This is the first question. The second question, 
regarding your students, uh, when you are going to evaluate the practical skills, such as fixing, such as assembling, assembling some system and insulation, uh, what uh, are you doing regarding this issue? Okay, thank you for your question. So the so first question, I don't, um, I'm, <laughs> I don't know if I, I have some answer, a good answer for you, because uh, I, I don't really. I am. I know that some colleagues I'm, are also using some. Um, uh, also, some um, using some projects-based learning and problem-based learning, but I don't can give you more details about mechanical engineering, for example. But I was thinking you, but. Um, I, I perhaps I know that they are using a lot um, some uh, how, how do you say these tools Katia and also SolidWorks and I and they they also design some mechanical uh, pieces and they do some project with them to uh, so. But I'm not more. Uh, I, I don't know more about this, so I cannot give you more details about it. And uh, the second part of the question is for the evaluation. So I ask to make uh, most of the time they have to make a report where they explain uh, all the the um, for short project for 20 hours project they have to make a report and uh, also sometimes i ask to make an oral presentation and that is also very important because in the industry they need they need to present them work and it's also one of the knowledge and the skills that they have they have to develop is to present them work present make a oral presentation or uh, a, a writing report that is very important for their for their for the skills that they have to, to develop for the for the for the for the industry. And also for more long project, for example, the beehive monitoring project that I uh, show you, it's a project on a semester. We make interv interval reviews, so uh, the review we call it a uh, project reviews like uh, in the industry and they have some goals to achieve to for each uh, review and we uh, make some short present it's a group project huh? they are by four or five students and they have to uh, explain what they what they achieve during the for each month for example we do a review of the project and they have to explain what they do during this period and to achieve some goals for each um, for each part so that was uh, the, the manner that uh, we uh, and also uh, perhaps one thing that we ask them i can show you i can share my screen we ask since uh, a couple of years three or four years in place to uh, to make a report and give us a report and that is uh, being in an, our computer we ask to make an article on a, a sharing in place to make a report, we asked to make an article here. For example, I show you one of the article of my students. Uh, I, yeah, here, for example, ST Connect. They have to uh, write an article on this kind of site. It's a, a knowledge sharing site. So they have to, uh, and we grade, we give a grade also, also for this. That is one example. So they uh, they talk about the project. They present each piece. Uh, they give also the schematic. So this one is the code, etc. And also the story of the project. Uh, this guy. This also. That is that are project of my students. I can share with you if you want. Yes. Yes, if you please. Uh, thank you. And so also it's nice for them because they have something to show to the to the 
what they did during their studying. So kind of what we call in French a portfolio. So they can also say, during my studies, I did this project. Look, you can see it here. So with the story, with all the code they developed, the different step. Uh, and more and more, we ask them to, to, do, to, to, uh, to make this kind of work also in English. So that, that gives them a, with the schematic of the and um, extra, but it's it's right. It's really uh, focused on my field on electronic embedded systems. So and I think it's different in mechanical engineering. But I'm not close enough with my colleagues of mechanical engineering to know what they are using for tools and uh, etc. So. Uh, it's a little bit too difficult to me to respond to, to your question. Uh, here, there's another behalf I can share that this one is also one project of my students. And so, so they can sometimes have some interaction with, uh, with other peoples. Mm. So I share some uh, Some of this project, there's this one is also any track. It was a, a tracker for for animals. So I asked them to to make uh, and I grade it. So I uh, I grade this report in place to give me a, a report. I asked to to do, to do an article on this kind of site and I grade it.